Hello mate and welcome to Let's Code Season 5.0. Haven't thought of a title for it yet. In this video what we're going to do is we're going to take a brand new project in uh, Rempi and we're going to sort out all of our files. We're going to organize things in a way that makes more sense for our project. So before you do anything else, get yourself loaded up into Rempi, start a new project. I've gone with 1920 by 1080. You don't necessarily have to do it at that resolution but to be honest, that's pretty much the standard these days. It doesn't matter what color profile you choose because we're not going to be using an awful lot of the colors that Rempi adds to our game. Once you've done that, get yourself into Atom or whatever text editor you're going to use. I use Atom. I have the Python and Rempi packages installed to enable me to be able to see the colored text that you all seem to be so obsessed with. Okay. <laughs> So now that we've done that, what we need to do is we need to come into our game folder on the left hand side here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. Call it scripts like so. And then I'm going to take all of my script files here and I'm just going to drag them over into there like that. And then that means that I can keep my game folder nice and tidy. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my screens.rpy file and we're going to have a quick look at it. So all of the defaults in Rempi are contained within this folder, but they make references to GUI.RPY, which for the sake of simplicity is handy. However, for our needs, it's not what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down the screens.RPY file into individual screen files to make it a little bit easier for us to navigate. So what we're going to do is inside scripts, we're going to create a new folder and we're just going to call it core. And then inside our core folder, we're going to create another new folder and we're going to call it screens. OK, and that means that we can put all of our screen files within this folder and it will mean that navigating and finding any specific screen that we want to use a lot easier. It also means that we can delete any of the crap that we don't need. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new file called say.rpy. Then we're going to come back to our screens file and where we have our say screen here we're just going to cut this bit out we'll start off with the tool tip at the top and then we will come down and we will collect all of this information here down to the input screen we're going to press Control and x we're going to cut it and then we're going to paste it into here then we're going to save that file we can close it and then we can move on to the next one. The next one is the input screen. Are we going to allow the user to input any data? Well, yes, because we need information for our leaderboard. So what we're going to do again, we're going to control X that we're going to start a new file called input. Making sure there's no space in it. RPY. Paste that in there. Save it. Close it. The next one's going to be our choice screen. So we're going to grab that as well and all the associated styles. Control X new file choice.rpy paste that into there perfect all okay quick menu we do not need the quick menu so we're going to delete that navigation and main menu screens we do need so we're going to take the main menu and game menu screens and we'll go all the way down to there we'll make sure that we get the name of this one we're going to go control x new file navigation.rpy paste that in there save it close it main menu same again new file main underscore menu.rpy come back into our screens.rpy just copy all of that useful text in there right down to the next one where it says game menu screen control x control v control save and close Okay, so as you can see, we're just breaking it down. We're making it easier for ourselves to work with these files later on. So we're going to go to new file. This one's going to be game menu, game, let's go menu, the RPY. Grab all of that code there, right down to the next separator. Control X, Control V, Control Save, and close. We don't need the about screen, so we can get rid of that. That's no use to us. 
Load and save screens we'll obviously probably not need, but we're going to take them out anyway. Control X. Screens, new file. And we'll just call this load underscore save dot RPY. Paste that in there, save it, close it. Jobs are good. Preferences screen, mm, I probably don't imagine us needing it to be quite honest. However, you might want to keep it. It's entirely up to you. The same with the history screen. I have no interest in that. Help screen, also no interest in that. So we can come all the way down here. Additional screens. Now the confirm screen is important. So we're going to need to get that. Control X. New file. Confirmed RPY. Paste that in there. Save it. Close it. The skip indicator screen, again, we don't need that because we're not really going to have any dialogue to skip. Notify screen might come in handy though because we might want to use that or, we, or use its code later on. So we'll copy that and we'll pop that into our screens folder as well. Notify the RPY, paste that in there, save it and close it. NVL, probably not going to need that to be quite honest. Uh, so we can get rid of that and we can get rid of mobile variants because we're not going to make those either. So we'll get rid of all of that stuff. So all we're left now with is a folder with some styles in it. Like so. So we can just get rid of all of this extra bump in there. And this can be the file where we define any styles that we might want to use. Or we can do it individually in our mini games. So we'll just save that. And I'm actually going to rename this now to something more accurate. So we'll just go to rename and we'll just call this styles.rpy and then we're going to copy styles.rpy or rather move it into our screens folder as well. And then we can get rid of the compiled screens file there. We don't need it. It's just um, in the way now at this point. Right. So now we've separated out our screens into a more usable format. We've got ourselves into a situation where if I need to change something in the choice screen, I can just click on that there and boom, that's exactly the code I need. No problem at all. Now, because this is going to be a largely Python based system or a game, we don't really need to worry too much about having these appear or happen before the init because most of our code is going to be um, defined in our Python script. So we can actually close down screens for now and get rid of that. And we can now go into our core. We can create a new folder and we can just call this mini games. And then inside mini games, we can create our folders for our first game. So let's do that now. And we're going to create a template. So new file and we'll just call this mini underscore template dot RPY. And this is where we're going to define what all of our mini games, the basic format that all of our mini games are going to take. So the first thing we need to do is separate off a section. We're going to create a separator. So just create a whole buttload of ashes and copy those. And if you want to, you can have a gap in the middle where you just create space for some text. So I'm going to go to about there, I think. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm just going to go control C, control V. And I think I'll do one more and then, oh, no, didn't mean to do that. Control Z, control C, control to me. There we go. Right now, so now we've got a separator and we can just put whatever's going to be happening in here. So we can create a block or Python. Python code can live inside that one. We're just going to centralize that otherwise that's going to be setting off people's OCD isn't it so that's our first separator and we can just copy that create a few spaces do that again and then we can have our screen code in this one and we can have our uh, styles perhaps in that section so we've got now got three distinct sections so the next thing we need to do is we actually need to tell Rempy when we're going to load this. So the first bit we need to do is we need to tell Rempy you got to load this straight away, mate. So we're going to say init one Python, and then the next game will be init two Python, and so on. 
and then this is the area where we're going to import anything that we might need now i know for a fact that we're going to need the imp the math module so we're going to say import math and possibly going to need some more but we'll call those in when we need them i definitely need random as well so there we go so we've called in two modules that we're going to use for the rest of our game and now we need to define some classes and other things and variables and all sorts of things so we're going to cover that perhaps in the next video but we need to make sure that we've got everything that's tickety boom working because obviously it's not going to be much fun if as soon as we get to the end of the first video what we have doesn't work so before we do anything else we're going to load our project as i've done here and we're just going to double check that the game actually loads without any error which it has done and then if we hit start we should see the standard eileen you've created a new rempi game blah 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 yada 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 blah 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 and then it goes back to the main menu that means that we haven't broken anything as yet which is good so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come into my screens and i'm actually going to go to the navigation screen here i'm going to remove some of those options because we don't need them first thing i'm going to do is get rid of history and get rid of that else statement because we don't need that save is fine load is fine preferences we don't need that we're not going to have any replays uh, so we're going to get rid of that we're going to have the option to go to the main menu if it's not the main menu that's fine we also don't have an about section and we don't have help section meaning we don't need to get that if statement there there we go so if main menu we can just say quit we can say quit no matter where it is like so so we now have the functions load and quit available to us at all times and then if we're in the main menu we have the ability to start and save and if it's not in the main menu we have the ability to go back to the main menu so that's that screen ready to go if you want to test it by all means do so and see what happens and one other change we need to make is we actually need to make this elif statement into an actual if statement we need to make sure that it's in the right tab um level because we don't have an if statement to uh, go in here i mean we could say if main menu else or whatever but we'll just say there so change that elif statement to if not main menu make sure you save it and then do a test run and now when you run your game you should simply see start save load quit and um, because we're in the main menu we actually need to remove that we need to do a change there because save shouldn't be appearing because we are in the main menu so let's do that so we've got this save option here we need to actually move that to control x and we're going to put that in the if not main menu option like that and then we'll get our load and we will pop that in here i think so now we actually do need to rewrite that if statement so if we say if not main menu save we're going to definitely have the uh we can actually change that to an else statement to be completely honest so we can just say else else there and then we can <laughs> without accidentally deleting everything we can just get rid of that there so we're saying if it's if it is the main menu then we will have start otherwise we're going to have save those will be our two options we'll also have always have the ability to load and we will also have the ability to if we are not main menu then it will show the main menu button there okay so now we've got ourselves organized so now when we test run it you can see that we just have start load and quit and because we don't have any save games we will see nothing in the load menu but if we were to start the game and then right click you can see we now have save load main menu and quit available to us so that is our navigation menu sorted now the idea of this uh mini game kind of setup is that we're not going to have any need to really save or load because we're just going to play the mini game and then if it is in a score that's high enough to go on the leaderboard we'll put the score on the leaderboard and show the leaderboard basically as an option in the main menu so we will cover that in the next video as to how to actually bring up a leaderboard. But for now, we've got our project organized and ready to go and working so that when we go to the next stage, which is writing our mini games, we're basically good to go. 
So thanks very much for watching that, guys. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.